Yesterday we spoke about symptom, contraction. Is contraction meant to be taken literally or not literally? Meaning, does God truly displace himself, remove himself? Still in, in control, but does he remove himself? Uh, in a literal sense, that the essence of God isn't here. His reach is here, but and his providence, he's a control, but he himself removes himself. Or, as the Altered Rebbe learns in Tanya, then no, the Arizal's teaching of Simpson, of contraction, the idea that from an infinite God you can get a finite world because God contracts on his infinite nature to make space, so to speak, or room, if you want to call it, for finite existence, that that's not literally that God removes himself, but he only hides himself. He only hides himself. So this symptom that we're talking about, that is a concealment on God's presence, the other Rebbe continues and speaks about this idea that it occurs in two dimensions, two different waves. Terminology, soivev kol almin and memale kol almin. The way God encompasses the world and the way God invests himself within the world, within creation. So there's a symptom, there's a contraction. But that contraction doesn't mean, again, that God contracts himself out and, and is in control from beyond. No. He is contracted in these two dimensions. One is a more powerful light that remains. One is a more reduced, a further contracted. So the first one is called Soivev Kol Amin, that he encompasses the world. Again, it doesn't mean, God forbid, that God is not found within the world, that he's merely encompassing, just like, you know, uh, you know, my, my hands are encompassing this mug, but they're not in the mug. I'm not part of the reality from within the mug. I'm only part of the reality uh, uh, um, beyond the mug, encompassing it, right? So al Rebbe says, no, 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 no. It doesn't mean that that in the physical sense of encompassing. So then how do we understand it? We need an analogy for this. Well, to appreciate that when we say the word encompassing, we don't mean God encompasses from beyond, and therefore he only has a, a reach in, but he himself is beyond it. Because, again, in our terminology, the word encompassing means that idea. So, you, beautiful metaphor. So, close your eyes for a moment and think about having, you know, here in, in, in Montreal, the pandemic has taken longer uh, in the sense that there's still, well, until Monday at least, you can't even be in someone's backyard. Monday, you that will be removed and, you know, eight people can be in someone's backyard. So can imagine, think for a moment, take an image of your family and friends. Only eight people, but okay, still eight. In your backyard, you're making a barbecue, you're sitting and you're uh, making a l'chaim, you're making a fabringen, saying words of Tanya, <laughs> you know, or words of, you know, whatever. And you're sharing. And that image is... What would we call that image in your mind? It's encompassed in your mind. But is it still in your mind? Of course it's in your mind. But we call it encompassed in my mind is the image of this beautiful time we're going to have together with family and friends. Only eight. Don't, don't think anymore. <laughs> Not allowed to. <laughs> the thought police will get after you. Um, <clears throat> so... It is encompassed in our mind, but of course only the image. Now, take that metaphor and understand that by God, it's not just the image that's encompassed in his, in God's, as it were, mind, in his intelligence, in his knowledge, in his thought, but it is me, you, the entire universe, all the galaxies are encompassed in his thought. 
and his knowledge. And let's take this a, a bit further so we can appreciate that how powerful this idea is and this metaphor is. When you think that image in your in your mind, right? When you think it, what are you doing? You're creating it. The moment you stop thinking it, open up your eyes and stop that image, it ceases to exist. Exactly God in the act of creation. Except God is not bringing into creation an image of us, but but us is, you know, beyond him. No, 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 no. We're encompassed in God's thought, in his knowledge. And because he thinks, because he's aware, that is giving vitality, giving reality, giving existence to you and I. And again, the entire universe. That's really powerful when you think about it. Whoa, that's amazing. Now, so what does it mean encompass over here then? Well, why are we using that term? Because it, it, it does have an importance because the encompassing is that we don't experience that reality because it's beyond us. Not because God is removed, God forbid. God is found in this manner within creation by the fact that he is aware, has knowledge, thinks it, sort of, you know, thinks it, it is, just as I think about the image in my mind. It brings it into existence. So God brings me and you and the entire galaxies into existence in this manner. But it's encompassed, that's the term that we use in our mind, encompass in my mind is such and such a beautiful image. Um, so we are, but encompasses in the sense that it doesn't penetrate me doesn't penetrate you that light of God that is giving me existence because if it did I wouldn't sense my independence I wouldn't feel that I'm separate from God that I am me I would feel that I'm within my source the ray of light within the sun is that clear? I hope that's clear. That's, you know. Now, that 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 took a contraction that God encompasses because that itself is some kind of, um, even though it's encompassing and it is beyond the creation that is a finite creation, right? Um it is um it is sort of sorry it's beyond us we can't uh, fathom it we don't experience it but it is very much found within us within us it is ultimately a higher reality but then god contracts further in other words that's one form of vitality and 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 creative power of god Saivid, encompassing, but then there is a further, much more contraction, deeper contraction, that the light becomes so reduced that it actually could be internalized in the created being, not encompassing, internalized, meaning that we have some kind of sense of it. We have some sense of its um, reality within us. And that is, metaphorically, as the soul contracts, for example, invests itself in the eye that the eye can see or that the ear can hear right that's vested that's not encompassing now we're talking about a, a a contracted light that's vested within the created being right that gives it its unique quality functionality purpose meaning the eye to see the ear to hear and the likewise This is, of course, extremely finite and limited. Even the sun is limited. It, it is not a created being that has the power to, uh, to emit rays of, of, uh, of sunlight forever. Not forever. Right. It's finite. It's limited. I mean, it's going to be for 
has been for some time and will continue to be some time, but it is not forever. And the this process of self-limitation is memale. Memale means fills the world, fills the created being according to the dimensions and limitation of that created thing. An eye is limited, can only see. The ear can only hear. The sun can you know, act as the sun. And, and this, unlike Soivev, the encompassing light of God, that we don't experience or, or beyond our comprehension, this we can have some kind of comprehension and, and appreciation of. That, this we can. How? How? Next class will teach us how we can have an appreciation and understanding. Sorry, that's the end of today's class. <laughs> I know, always to keep you, uh, you know, on your toes, making sure that, you know, you come back for more. God willing. Again, uh, the notifications, I know that there's been some problems. Um, please, uh, everybody on Facebook, contact Chabad.org. Send them a message. The more messages they'll get, the more they'll be on it. Um, yeah, so please do that. Any questions, any comments? I don't see any questions. Davida? Uh, please, two question marks before the question. Don't put it at the end of the question because I look at the beginning to see um, since there's so many comments that come on, it's it's difficult, so please make it easier for me. Okay. Um, I don't see anything. Yana, Tim, Jeff, Sina, David. Uh, why are you guys being so quiet? I haven't seen you so quiet before. Mm -hmm. Omari, Crystal. Sarah, Esther. Thank you, Esther. Find. Uh, oh, there you go. Tim, the floor is yours. Go ahead. Tim, did you want to share something? Just wanted to say thank you. Oh, <laughs> you're thank, <laughs> thank you for the thank you. You're very kind. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Uh, Barry has a question. If our existence depends on God's thought, where does free will come in? God's not telling you what to choose. He's just giving you the vitality to exist and the vitality or the existence and the vitality that you exist um, in a certain way. In other words, that, that you could, your eyes could see, <laughs> right? How you choose to see and what you choose to hear and how you choose to respond to what you see and hear God is not dictating that. What God is doing is giving vitality. vitality. Let, let me give you uh, a very good question. But let, let me give you, I've told this story before, but well, worth telling it again. A friend of mine was once walking on a misty day in New York City, had an umbrella at his side, and uh, some teenage punk um, said, your money or your life? <laughs> Or get, you know, pointed a gun at him. And he said, "Your money." Uh, now my friend is kind of uh, like, uh, I, I mean, he did this on on, on you know knee jerk reaction. 
he took the umbrella and swatted it at, at his at the gun um no i don't think he really fought he didn't think deeply that's for sure <laughs> the gun went off the uh the gun went flying also after and um my my this kid ran off and my friend walked walked away came home uh he was newly married and his uh, wife sees oh my gosh she starts to scream you're full of blood so he didn't realize because of the adrenaline in the moment that he actually got a bullet lodged in his chin true story by the way I'm not making it up in his chin a bullet got lodged I mean, that's the story I just I mean I, I now what's the point of the story did that a uh, punk kid have a choice to to pull the trigger or not absolutely had the choice the effect of his choice is that something he controlled the ricochet of the bullet off the umbrella could have ricocheted missed him entirely could have ricocheted hit him in the brain god forbid and he would not be here any longer but for whatever reason and it's not about why that's not the point over here but the fact is that it ricocheted and hit him in the chin. Um, hit him in the chin. Grazed him or whatever, you know. In any case, how did that happen? Did he, ch like, he chose to, that it should graze off the, uh, the the um deflect off the umbrella and that that's what should happen obviously not so who decided that happenstance well we don't believe that god why again that's irrelevant but what it's god so does that take away from you know therefore you say well god did that then what's the kid responsible well he's responsible for the choice he made to pull the trigger that it's responsible the effect of it all right that's wasn't um something that he has control over for that he's responsible so yes we still have freedom of choice it doesn't take away freedom of choice even though god thinks i mean we're going to get more the details of, of what that means that he brings us into existence but absolutely um and it's not a contradiction i hope that's clear thank you for the wonderful question i know i saw another question Okay, Leanne, I apologize, this has already been addressed, but wondering how to sign up for the Tanya journaling. Um, well, the best thing is if you first, hmm, if you send me your email, that's the best thing. And if not that, then um, go to tanyarabbi.com. I think I don't know if exactly where it is there, but it's somewhere there. I'm sorry, I, I should have gotten ready the the link. Okay, I think we answered all the questions then. Anybody else? I know now that. I know now that. Please share. Well, I don't see a know now that. Okay. 
David, Sina, Jeff, Liana. Jeff and Liana, you're so quiet. Sina. Hi. Hi. I don't have a really anything to say. I just wanted to come up here and say hi and uh, show my appreciation. I'm always grateful that you come on every single day and and share these teachings. Um, something else, I do believe you have my email, and I would love to sign up for that book. So um, I guess I'll just tell you that right here. Uh, okay. Thank you. Um you should have received uh, i think we have your email and i think you should have received it and if you didn't oh goodness if it's my old one i'm not sure which one you sent it to uh but if it's my so, old one so then just I, it's loaded and if it's my new one i haven't i haven't looked at that one so. right so then um maybe just private message me your email that would be the best thing okay great wonderful oh okay heather just put up Okay. Thank you, Heather. And then anything else that you can put up, that's great. David. Yeah. Um, can you hear me? Absolutely. Okay. So I know now that um, basically we make we have we have free will to choi choose good or bad. That's our choice. And Hashem ultimately uh, the consequences comes from Hashem, just like you said with the uh, umbrella. Well, we make choice. We make choices, and Hashem gives us a choice to either go towards Him, do good, or do something uh, against Hashem's will. Well, it's ultimately Hashem gives us the, ch the choice to to uh, gives us the choice. So, in the end, uh, our choice is really up to us. But uh, we want to uh, ultimately we should try to do what's right and do what Hashem wants from us. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you, thank you. All right. Yes, so Heather put up over here. Thank you. Oh, Anna says, I know now that the creations are like the thought of Hashem. He encompasses us and invests in us. When he stopped thinking, the creations would disappear, become nothing. Exactly. And he doesn't do that. <laughs> right. it, it, it's not so much that we should have the fear that God's going to do that. It's more about appreciating, um, uh, not that you were su suggesting that, Heather, but it's more about that God's presence is to be found here in this world and not removed from this world. That was uh, the idea that we learned you know, based on yesterday's class. Okay. Wonderful. Um, more to come. God willing. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine. Coming to you for Chabad Zich and Kadeshim in Montreal, Canada. It's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the Tanya. Have a wonderful day and a good Shabbos, everybody. See you Sunday, 10.30.